What's up StarCraft fans, I have made several video guides before on how to play the commanders, but I haven't really focused on the guys who really need the help on how to play the commanders, the newer guys or the lower level guys. Now, there are any number of levels, well there are exactly 15 levels from when you first start playing a commander up to when you have it to the maximum level, and then after that you have the mastery levels, which are all different. So I thought, well, Probably the best way to do that is to play a level a commander from level one and just uh, instruct people for how to play that commander at level one. And then as you get more things, you get more options. So I think that's how we'll do it today. We'll start with Raynor and we'll go on Mr. to Korhal, the map where we have to destroy the void shards. My ally and Darth will be helping me out. He'll be playing a Zer tool. Thank you to Legendary Sinner who is supporting me in the mobilization raid tier, and Darth and Shadow Archon who are supporting me in the Pulse Cannon tier. So instead of buying a new account and starting to level my commanders all over again, I still haven't finished Prestige on all four servers. I'll instead go on the Maguro map and uh, yeah, I'll go on the Maguro map and we'll play against the AI and I'll set myself to level 1 so I can simulate playing as level 1. So again, this is the map where we have to destroy Void Rifts on the map. Uh, for each Void Rift that- or for each set of Void Rifts that we kill, the next ones will spawn and we'll have more time on the map. So. Um, let's go ahead and start. Okay, so Raynor's probably the very first commander you start with. So, to play Raynor, you need to have a strong economy, which means you need to start workers right away. You need to get as many workers as possible, and ideally, you want to be constantly producing workers. Look at this, the, on the command, uh, on the queue. I just have workers constantly producing until, like, I have 21 out of 21 on my minerals and 3 each on gas. And I do that for two bases. And yeah, you notice that I only have like one or two SCVs queued up at most because if you have like, for example, five SCVs queued up, that's technically still floating money. Because what happens if you queue them up is that they don't actually, you know, get produced. They're just on the waiting queue until they are first in line. So for example, yeah, if I have two in queue, only one SCV is technically floating in the queue, but the other one is ready to go. Or uh, yeah, the other one is actually producing us. So that is actually money that's being invested, being put to good use. If you queue more, if you queue up like three, four, and five, all those three are not really producing. They're not really building, so they're really just idle resources. So for the first wave here, uh, I'll I'll probably have to set up some defense so that uh, we won't die. Because well, either way, you'll want to learn how to defend as Raynor. So uh, way how you start off is by, uh, yeah, you can make a bunker here and then add marines into it. So you put Raynor's marines in these bunkers, so all of his infantry units, all of Raynor's infantry units go in these bunkers, and they'll be able to uh, defend just fine. And how I like to, to defend is actually by uh, uh, adding additional buildings, like right next to the uh, the command center, or, or the bunker rather. And those extra buildings will make it harder for the enemy to get a full surround on my bunker. How that'll work? How that? Uh, how that? What? Well, what the effect is? Is that uh, overall my uh, bunker will take less damage because the enemies, the, the zerglings, will have less. There will there'll be fewer zerglings overall attacking any one side of my my uh, my bunker. So now I will unload all my my, my marines. And I'll start attacking this rock over here because yeah, as I said, uh, Raynor is a very economy line commander. So I will want to actually. Uh, break my rocks as soon as possible so that uh, I can put my command center in place and I can have more workers mining. So, uh, you do want to take your gases, as Raynor, because you want to get upgrades and better units like medics, marauders, and firebats. In this case, you can see in the lower left, the enemy's devouring scourge. That means we'll have uh, scourge, mutilisks, guardians, and devourers later on. And Marines are perfectly fine against that. You'll, I will also want some Zerglings. Also, you notice that I've upgraded my Command Center into Orbital Command pretty much right away. If you're starting out as Raynor, one of the most important rules for you to learn is that Orbital Commands are Im amazingly good. Because they give you mules, these yellow harvesting things, and they give you much more money uh, when you uh, use them to harvest. And yeah, more money means more, more 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 soldiers, more marines, and that means you'll have a stronger push later on. So if you're if you're uh, playing Raynor for the first time here, 
it likely means you're new to the game. So, like, the concept of Rainer, you just, yeah, you can just keep making workers until you have An enough workers uh, harvesting they minerals here. And yeah, once you have, once your orbital, once your command center completes, upgrade it right away to an orbital command. And you, uh, you can see here I have that pier ready, it's a top bar ability. I can click it here or use a hotkey and then press it right here. So you can, I can, I can just uh, make the pier fight on here. And uh, something that you ought to know is that the pier attacks faster when it's in motion. So what I like to do is just uh, have my pier and costly uh, move all around. I, I just hold shift and then right click on various sides of the map so that the pier will shoot faster. And if you're, once you get, get a little more advanced and you know the map a little better, you can do things like this. So point right here and you snipe these the vipers the because these vipers, these floaty snake things over here, are uh, very annoying to fight. So I actually want to fight them. I actually want to kill them off with that period as soon as they can. And just, yeah, just kind of uh, kill them before they are a problem later on. That's uh, one of the things, one of the secrets that you will quickly learn is uh, vipers are annoying and you want to deal with them as little as possible. So now I'm going to get a tech lab on my barracks. That will allow me to produce higher tech units as well as upgrade my existing units to get things like combat shields and uh, uh, healing upgrades for my medics later on. So I'm building more barracks because, yeah, as I mentioned before, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, whenever you have too many units queued up in the same structure, the rest of these 3, 4, and 5 are not actually building. They're just sitting there. And they're not being utilized. So what I'm doing instead is I made more of these barracks so that all my money will be put to use, and I'll queue them all my uh, all my soul, all my infantry simultaneously, so that they'll be building at the same time. Start a refinery here so I can get more gas. And you can see uh, I do get this upgrade. Combat shield will allow me to get to, uh, will allow my marines to get extra ten health. I'll make this fire bat. These fire bats are pretty good against uh, against uh, zerglings, as you will see, because they have fire. It, it, you know, killed with fire is uh, the motto of fire bats, and you will see later on that they're pretty effective. So I stem these marines so that they'll shoot faster, and you can see that they are doing pretty well because these these fire bats are roasting, absolutely roasting these. Uh, these are, you can look, look at that. Look at this. Ooh, that's pretty effective. All right, so now I will add even more backs. Just keep adding more backs so that I already have even more infantry ready to fight. Just keep making. You can see that. Yeah, I need two more here to get to twenty-one out of twenty-one. And here, I need one more to get fifteen out of fifteen. You notice that I made these extra command setters. You don't want to do that for every commander. Rainer is one of the commanders where you do want these extra uh, command setters. Because each one of them, you can transform each one of these into an orbital command, and each one of them, each one of these orbital commands will be able to get mules. So I just deploy all these mules onto these blue crystal, uh, on these blue mineral crystals, so that I will have a lot of income. And again, once I have these barracks, I just get more of these add-ons. The tech lab will allow me to produce higher tech units like fire bats, marauders, and medics, and the reactor will allow me to make two marines at once but it will not allow me to make these uh, higher tech units. And you can see as I go up in supply, I'll need to be, build more of these supply depots. So I won't get supply blocked. I will add... So, if you're starting out, in, if you're starting out in, in StarCraft, you will quickly learn that you'll want to have these things here called control groups. The control groups will allow you to control your army without having to, without having to box select them every time. Like, imagine if I had to... Go, go to this screen every time, box these all the time, or use the all army hotkey, and then just move it every time. Whenever, whenever I have to make more units, I have to click back to base, click all these uh, these barracks, and then that's, before, that's the only time I can actually make stuff out of them. That's not going to work very well. That's why I am actually uh, getting all these uh, control You can see the first control group, I have, I, just, I have just orbitals, so that I can just mule right away. In the second control group, I have the uh, the barracks, my production, so I can just, uh, yeah, select them all and then uh, have them all produced at the same time. Another one is, of course, my infantry. 
I just, yeah. Stim and move in. So now I, I have another control group. These are my upgrade buildings. I get upgrades out of them. So as Raynor, aside from aside from the uh, the obvious uh, uh, hold on, that's the bonus. Got to retreat from that. You don't want to fight the bonus alongside these because it's be a little tricky. Okay. Jump over here. I jump over here. I will want to fight more of these vipers. Yeah, I really don't want to deal with these vipers. I'll sh I'll just right click them down when I can. Yeah, right click this viper. I don't want to deal with that later on. I'm trying to deal with it right now. This will help you out. Whether you're level 1 or level 50 or level 90, you will want these. You will want to get rid of those vipers later on. Now time to get this, our, uh, this factory. I actually need the factory to be able to uh, uh, produce more high-tech units. And yeah, aside from dropping mules, the orbital commands I have here can also use the scanner sweep. The, sc the scanner sweep that will allow me to find cloaked units and destroy them. We got some visitors heading for our base. Stim in. Build more depots so I can get, so I can just have stuff producing all the time. So you can see all my forces rallying out. They're just rallying and they're they're gonna be able to fight. As soon as they get to the front, yeah, just rallying here. At higher levels, you, you'll be able to get yourself a bunch of uh, other stuff to uh, to fight. Like for example, or a lot of a, a lot of better, a lot better upgrades. Uh, for example, later on, you'll be able to gain the ability to drop your forces directly onto the battlefield. But for now, having them rally all across the map is just fine. Yeah, just keep building that. I'll want to build the armory next. Well, that makes one less to deal the armory will allow me to, on top of uh, being able to get uh, upgrades for my mechanical units, I'll also, I also require an armory to get higher level upgrades for my infantry. Also, I'll probably tell them how oh, that next single, that single guardian, I, mean, I can probably take that. I want to have my fire bass in front so that they will, it will soak all the damage. You can see it's all about just constantly producing forces, just moving in. You can see that now that there aren't any more of these uh, those annoying vipers, all my forces can fight at the same time. I want to snipe down the Spurker so that my forces won't have such a tremendously difficult time. Okay, snipe this. I just right click that. Swarm host, right click this other one. And now fight. Oh, there's another one over here. Destroy this. With all the cloak units gone, I don't need any more scans. I just yeah, I just constantly produce more units, get more upgrades. That's how you, uh, that's how you play as Raynor. You get units, you get upgrades, and yeah, the important thing is the backbone of all that is, of course, remember that the backbone is getting your, uh, your harvesting, your mineral harvesting, uh, all the way to the uh, all the way to to the fullest. And then once you are once you have uh, the most uh, harvesting possible you'll be able to produce a lot of forces. So in general, you want to have like four orbitals, four orbital commands, and like five barracks. That's generally the number you want as Rainer. And you can just, you know, stim in. You just keep fighting these dudes. Okay. Okay, just uh, destroy all these dudes. Add more depots. So... Uh, in 1v1, even in co-op, you can get supply blocked, and what that means is, uh, once you've reached the uh, uh, the maximum supply, uh, for example, 180 and 180, you can't build anymore until you build more depots. So what better players like to do against that is they start building the depots before they actually need them, like just before, not way too early, otherwise you're wasting money. But you want to build your force, your your depots, just ahead of when you need them, so that okay, I'll scan here once again, so that uh, when the time comes, your production won't be hampered. Yeah, okay, teleport here. There's another viper over here. Okay, let's find more vipers. I know there's another viper over here. Yeah, snipe that. There's another one over here. 
I think there are two, there are three more in this area. Here, here you go. Here's one. Here's another. And let's produce more. You can see that without without vipers, my forest can fight without having to uh, move around so much, and that uh, that is actually helping me out tremendously. And you just yeah, just keep using your mules, keep making marines. And just stim and just win. Alright. Keep fighting. You can see that I'm at, I'm at 200 out uh, of 200 supply. And what that means is I have the most army possible. And I can no longer build more. And that's the time when you will actually want to uh, get more uh, of a bank. Because if you have if you have a bank before you reach 200 out of 200. That means you're not maximizing your... Uh, you're not maximizing your income because it's just sitting there. It's just, you, you know, idle. It's idle resources, which is inefficient. Of course, I've been playing slower just because I'm demonstrating uh, what Rainer has. But ideally, I'd want to keep this close as close to zero as possible. The higher level you are, the higher level you are as a player, the lower this will be. And the reason why. The reason why professional players have a high APM isn't because they click really fast. It's because they know what to do and they're... Instead of clicking fast sometimes... One of the big differences between uh, good players and bad players is that bad players can also click fast. The difference is... Bad players don't know when to click fast and how... And uh, yeah, the, the, the bad players don't know what to do. So there are times when they don't click fast. Even though they can. But good players always know what to do next. So they're always doing stuff. And that gives the impression that they're just clicking fast. Whereas that's not really true. The, fa the, the good players kind of just know what comes next after what they're doing right now. And they know, what, they're, they know where to go. And they know what to do next. That's why they're issuing commands fast. Not because they click faster. But because there are fewer pauses in their thought process as to what to produce next. They know what to produce next and all I have to do is press the button to do it. Oh, see this, this is why vipers are annoying. You see this, this one big disabling cloud here. That will prevent all my forces from fighting while they're inside it. And that caused me to lose basically my whole army there. So I have to retreat for now and fight back another day or when I have, uh, when I have a more advantageous position like where I am right now. The next wave will not be here until a minute, another minute in. So that gives me time to gather up more forces here. Just gather more forces. I'll be able to once again push inside once, uh, once I have a sizable enough army. But I do remember that there are no more vipers remaining. Yes, I've in fact killed all the vipers. So I will have a smoother combat from here on out. And once you have... Once you're... Uh, once you're maxed out... At 200, 200, you can kind of just add. Feel free to add on more of these production structures, so that you'll be able to remax more quickly. Remax means once you lose your army, you can remake your army faster. Okay. Attack is on here. Or is on the way. You can see there's a, just a, a, a whole parade of forces marching towards the front. That means my production is actually just taking. It's flying. Okay, I'm able to still over here. Try intercept these forces. I yeah, just make more stuff. I should probably get more add-ons here. Yeah, just keep fighting these things. Okay, that's fast. <laughs> that's crazy. The high period did die really fast, but the good news is that my forces are getting massive ones. You can see I'm back all the way up to one, 170, 170 supply. And that's not because it click fast. It's just because you know, I know how to I know how to make marines. That's really it. And I just mule again. Send these two back to work. But yeah, one thing I I learned that bad players do is not have control groups. Control groups will make the game a lot easier, guarantee. I know it could sound tricky at first, like how using hotkeys. 
using control groups. I know it sounds tricky at first, like it'll add more steps, but ultimately it'll really help you uh, control your forces a lot better. Just, you know, yeah, just max out again. Don't worry, you're fine. Take note, guys, this is level 1. We are doing pretty smoothly here for a level 1 commander. And this is, again, on brutal difficulty. Which means this is the highest possible outside of difficulties with mutators. So yes, uh, this is actually... Uh, going relatively smoothly, let's say. There, there was only one time where I really, really lost a lot of my army. And there it is. is so, recap. What you want to do is, as Rainer, you just get your economy rolling. Now I 69, 920. He had about 500 too much damage. That's a bit, feels bad, man. But, yeah. What you want to do as Raynor is get a lot of orbitals up. Make sure you're you're constantly producing forces until uh you're constantly producing workers until you have fully saturated your harvesting lines, your middle lines, and constantly producing uh more forces until you hit, reach 200, 200, and just uh use your top bar abilities whenever available. Do not save your top bar abilities because, for example, the high period is one of those abilities you don't want to save. If you save that period for too long, it will it will be a waste because the period is just cooldown based. Give take this map for example, we took about uh, twenty seven minutes to to to, uh, uh, to beat this map. During that time, the period is a five minute cooldown. So I could have used that period a total of five times in total this game. If I save that period for like twelve minutes, that'll reduce. This they'll reduce the time left to uh, 15 minutes, which will leave me only three chances left to use that period. So, how I lose value from that is instead of using five appearance, I only get three, and that reduces my damage output. So, uh, as you grow more experience in playing co-op, you will figure out when to save the Hyperion and what to save it for. Generally. You don't save the high period. That it's better for you to learn how to use top bars right away and just keep spamming the top bars and then just later on figuring out when to save it. Rather than the other way around, keep saving it and just never learning to, when to use it. I think that's a lot more difficult than just using the period right away. Just use it right away. Just use just use it. And when you find that there's an attack wave that you should have had the period for, that's when you save. I think that's a more natural progression of learning how to use your top bars. And yeah, um, Raynor needs at least four command setters. Let's say three or four command setters or, and orbital commands. Remember, transform your command setters into orbitals right away so that you can uh, get the mules and get a lot of money coming into your bank right then. And to use that bank, you will need to have a lot of barracks producing infantry so that you can keep pumping out the forces. And remember, have your barracks in the same, in the same control group. You can just hold down the Marine button it'll fill up all that queue evenly. How the how the queue fills up, if you have, uh, for example, five or six of the same barracks in the same control group, each barracks will fill in uh, evenly. They won't all go to the same barracks, so you're fine in that regard. They'll just fill it evenly to make sure all, all barracks are producing units at the same time. That's how you want to macro as Raider. And uh, combat-wise, you saw against Zerg, I made sure to eliminate the Vipers because this is really annoying to fight. Against Protoss, you want to eliminate the Colossus, Reavers, Disruptors, and High Templar. Basically, they're sources of splash damage. And for Terran, same thing. You want to eliminate splash damage. Siege tanks, um, Widow Mines, Ravens, Science Vessels. Those are the things you want to eliminate as Raynor. So the, the, longer, the more, the more co-op games you play, the more you learn where to jump that pier to to snipe the uh, splash damage they do. That's the, that's the nice thing about that period. You can just jump in, kill the dangerous units so that your the rest of your army will have a more favorable engagement later on. You saw in this game that in the third set of void charts, the one in the, uh, the west, I was able to push in relatively easily despite not, not having a lot of top bars because 
I kill all the vipers already, so my forces can all shoot whenever they want. But in the last base, uh, up the, the, the far north, I was trying to push up with the Hyperion, but I was still getting pushed back because the Viper got a big disabled cloud on my entire force, and that prevent all the force under it from shooting. So yeah, whenever you can do it, use the Hyperion to snipe the uh, the annoying just like Vipers. And yeah, the more uh, the more levels you unlock as Rainer, the more powerful you'll be able to use, and then you'll be able to watch my other video on this on how to play Rainer with a max level. And uh, next week. I'll play Kerrigan at level 1 and try to show you how to use Kerrigan. I'll see you guys next time.